Hello and welcome to our webinar. This is Aaron Goldberg, Contributing Editor for IDG, and I'll be with you as moderator for today's event, where we're going to focus on how to improve the customer experience, which is a critical task. In today's digital business, there are new opportunities to substantially improve how we interact with customers and track how our efforts can improve this. Today's event will provide key inputs that IT leaders can use to improve the customer experience based on lessons learned in the real world. Most importantly, our speaker is going to detail some specific actions you can take in the next six months or so to improve the quality of your customer interactions. To do this, we have two expert speakers with us today, Nigel Fennick, VP and Principal Analyst at Forrester Research, and Matt Leach, Vice President, Digital and Application Services at NTT Data. So let's get into the meat of the matter because we're going to cover four key points in our agenda today. First is the role of the customer experience in digital transformation. Second, the current state of the customer experience. Third, IT's opportunity to drive customer experience. And fourth, what IT leaders can do now and over the next six months to improve that customer experience. Now, the role of the customer in digital transformation is absolutely essential. For any type of transformation to be successful, it needs to actually fulfill a need or solve a problem for those to be impacted. In the digital economy, the customer is a first and foremost and therefore, customer experience becomes a perspective we need to use to move towards becoming a digital organization. In fact, many organizations are seen through the lens of their customer experience. So, Matt, you know, what role do you see customer experience playing in this transformation agenda? It's a great question, Aaron. And here's the thing. Every business has a customer and interacts with that customer in different ways. And as we progress further and further into the digital economy, these customer interactions are going to become both more frequent and they're going to become more complex. At the same time, the bar for great experience is essentially being raised as customers begin to demand more from the organizations that they work with. And because of that, we see customer experience quickly becoming the last remaining differentiator across just about every industry. Companies are going to compete on how they service their customers. At the end of the day, the customer buying decisions, they're going to be influenced by how that customer feels they're being treated and really their overall experience with that organization. Think back to some of your own experiences as a customer. It turns out that as customers, we love the companies that give us a great experience and we just loathe the companies that provide a poor experience. And these types of sentiments are going to drive who we choose to buy from, who we choose to do business with, and eventually who we even want to be employed by now and in the future. So this importance that customers place on experience is exactly why it should be used to set the transformation agenda for every organization. The experience that your customers have, they provide the best possible insights into how we can better enable success for those customers and therefore success for your business. For some organizations, this type of customer-focused transformation, it might be exploring new digital channels or perhaps finding new ways to service customers through digital transformation. Or it might even mean looking at and identifying the underserved customers and associated new business models that will deliver what those customers are going to be demanding next. All this really is why in today's economy, when it comes to transformation, the first focus must be through the eyes of the customer. Nigel, in your research, what connections have you seen between the customer experience and successful transformation? Well, that's a great question, Matt. And, and one of the things I've looked at over the years is, is trying to understand companies that are leading customer experience. What are these companies doing differently to, say, the companies that are lagging behind? And then in the last few years, I've been looking very much at digital leaders and, and how those leaders are changing the way they think about the company. And some recent research we did looked at the, the critical success factors that digital leaders have and compared those to all other companies. And one of the interesting things that stood out for me was that the critical success factors of these digital leaders, there were two things that stood out as being very different than all the other companies. And that was their focus on being able to create new sources of value for their customers through, through typically through digital experiences or digital technologies. And the other is creating world-class digital experiences. And when you combine these two together, it gives an impression of, of just how customer-obsessed these companies are. And one of the things I wanted to do was to dig into why that was, right? Why are these companies doing this, both thinking differently about the customer, but also sort of operating at a different sort of level to every other company? And what it really comes down to is understanding some of the dynamics that are going on in the market. 
and I try to represent this very, in a very simple way and put it into a sort of a simple mathematical formula. So the formula looks a bit like this. If you put the customer experience at the top and you put customer expectations as at the bottom in the denominator and say that one divided by the other is going to give you a number for perceived value, it doesn't really matter what the numbers are at this point. If you just understand this sort of ex- equation, you can start understanding the relationship here. So what happens is uh, we have a set of experiences that we all have every day. So when I shop on Amazon, I get some experiences. And that experience sets my expectations about what's possible. And it's the collection of all the different experiences I have that set my expectations, not just with one company, but across the board. And so if these are in balance, if it's, say, uh, everything's uh, in balance, you get something that looks like this. It's uh, experiences 100, expectations are 100, and you have a perceived value of 1. Now, what happens over time is uh, our experiences change. Uh, they evolve. We get new app updates all the time, and that causes our expectations to evolve with those. And so as long as they both evolve, evolve in balance, we, we have a constant perceived value. But typically what happens is companies will put a new digital experience out, and they do it as a project, and they deliver it, and they don't change it. And this actually causes this equation to go out of balance because expectations are constantly rising. So what that then looks like is essentially your experience remains at 100, but the expectations, because they're rising, are going up all the time. The perceived value is actually going down. And this is the reality for most companies is that they look at in investing in digital projects that have a sort of a lifespan. And over that lifespan, and if they're not constantly evolving the experience, their perceived value from the, with their customers is constantly going down. And so this equation gets out of balance very quickly. And this is why we see a lot of differences in customer experience. And when we, when we do the analysis of, of just how much value is inherently behind creating better experiences, we did some research, my colleagues did some research recently that shows the value behind sort of these, these experiences from an industry perspective and, and what you can expect. And if you take a look at, say, the auto manufacturers mass market, an incremental increase in the annual revenue per customer of, of 48.56 multiplied by the average number of customers gives you a total revenue of 874 million, right? So one point improvement in a customer experience index score would give you this incremental revenue increase. And you can see from this slide that the, the revenue numbers in these different industries are, are huge, right? The, the potential for driving revenue from improving just a small increase in customer experience is enormous across many industries. And so we've done a lot of work with analyzing the sort of customer experience index that we use to measure different companies to identify which companies are doing well and which companies are not doing well and help them figure out how to improve the experience to drive that revenue to the bottom line. Matt, everyone thinks about the end customer. And what are the types of customer experiences should organizations be thinking about as they consider these issues? Well, Aaron, whenever we start a conversation like this one around the importance of customer experience and and the insights that understanding the customer experience can provide, most people, they tend to immediately jump to examples of an end user or an end customer in more of a traditional business-to-consumer or B2C business model. And the reason for this is pretty simple. It's often the mental model that we have of customer experience because it's the type of customer experiences that we traditionally have as consumers. But it really is just one type of customer, one example of that type of customer. Customer experience is just as important when you're dealing with business-to-business or business-to-employee transactions. Those expectations that Nigel just spoke about, they don't change. And in these types of cases, the impact of poor customer experience really can be just as, if not more, devastating than in the consumer world. Interestingly enough, I think some of the most impactful customer-driven insights that I have seen, which have led to true transformational opportunities, really have come from examining the experiences around these BDE or or these B2B interactions. So I would encourage every technology leader, every business leader, really to pay just as much attention to these business-to-business or business-to-employee experiences as they would to the end customer or the end consumer experience. Well, given that, it seems customer experience is is kind of a leading indicator these days, and and you really can't question its importance. But if we look at this, you know, what do we need to scale or get to the next level? You know, how do we get the the quantum improvements we want? And really, what progress has really and hasn't really been made with regard to the customer experience? You know, these are all key issues 
you know, given that there's so much emphasis about it in the industry, right, Nigel? I mean, can you share with us some examples of who's doing it well or, or where work is should be done, more work should be done, or where improvements needed? Sure. Well, you know, we track this customer experience index every year that looks at all the major brands. And one of the things that's really interesting to observe is just how difficult it is to sustain a leading customer experience because, as I mentioned before, these experiences and expectations are constantly evolving. And what I've got here is just showing you some the differences between 2016 and 2017 in terms of the, the collection of brands that may be rated for everything from very poor to excellent in terms of the customer experience index scores. And you see most companies are sitting in the okay section, right? They're, they're sort of the, we're okay because they're sort of the meeting expectations. There's a group of companies that are exceeding expectations to the right, and then there's a whole bunch of companies that are sort of going below expectations on the left. And when you look at this, what's interesting is uh, there's not a lot of movement between on the right-hand side going up, right? In fact, the, the good has gone down by one percentage point between 16 and 17, and so is the excellent. So it's very hard to sustain an excellent position because as you deliver an excellent experience, that now becomes expected. It becomes the norm. So you're, sh you're, you're shifting the, the problem onto everybody else in the industry, of course. They have to catch up. And that's what we see happening across these sort of the, the dynamics between these different brands. And, and it's much easier to make an incremental improvement at the bottom end of the scale than it is, say, at the top end of the scale. And to put this sort of a little bit more into context, when you look at when you start digging into these different types of changes that are going on and the brands that are in there, we start to identify some brands that are, are sort of what we describe as the laggards. The, the customer experience scores remain consistently the lower end of the rankings. They, they really struggle to improve their, their scores over time. Then there are, there are a whole bunch of companies that are sort of in, working in lockstep with each other, right? They, their experiences are mainly sort of on par with each other, and as they evolve, they keep evolving it's sort of in a very linear relationship to each other. And you see types of companies like uh, TV service providers, big box retailers, rental car companies, health insurance providers, are very often in this sort of linear relationship with each other. Then you have brands that are sort of lapses. Sort of these are brands that have really improved their experience scores, but then they've declined over, over one or two years. And you can imagine that formula I mentioned earlier getting out of balance here, right? They, they, they put some money in, they invest in improving their customer experience, but it, it's a project mentality. They've improved it, they don't keep changing it, and now that's set the expectations, but the, the value, perceived value, starts dropping off. So that's what happens if you don't keep evolving it. And the languishers, they're relatively high-scoring brands, but they've got stuck at that sort of top end, right? It's very hard to make a significant score change at that top end. And so the, there's different industries sort of operate very differently. And, and when you look at how to improve the experience scores, we see that very often it's, it's easy to make incremental improvements when you're bad in some industries, like airlines and wireless service providers, credit card companies. When they're bad and they, they start improving, they, they can make some big improvements, but then it gets increasingly harder and harder to make those improvements. And then there are other industries where the, the improvements in, in experience almost get exponentially better as they start you know, applying more technology to it. So banking, for example, financial services, is sort of on that upswing of almost exponential improvements. The auto industry is another one where we're seeing sort of market differences in, in delivery of experiences. So it's not a simple equation when you tease it out and say, what does it mean inside the industry? And so what we typically see happening there is, is that the, the viewpoint of how we think about the business has to shift. So if the old business paradigm was we have to develop products and services that, that satisfy a market need, the new paradigm really is one about looking at the business from the outside in, understanding the outcomes the customers are trying to get to, and saying, how do we design experiences that deliver the outcomes that satisfy the desires of those customers? It doesn't mean that products and services are irrelevant. They're still very relevant, but it has to be done in that context. The products and services have to be in the context of the experiences, outcomes, and desires that our customers have. In other words, outside in. And that's the big shift that we see happening that really sets the leaders apart from those companies that are chasing behind them. Nigel, that's a, a really interesting way to look at it. I think that that's something that everybody should be taking away from this. Uh, you know, Matt, 
for those laggards, you know, what needs to change? Do you think any of it relates to who's driving it today or where the impetus is coming from? It's a great question, Aaron, and yes, I do. I mean, one of the more significant challenges that any organizations face around customer experience really is the question of who in the organization actually owns that customer experience. And as organizations continue to expand how they engage with their customers, this problem's only going to get worse. And it becomes apparent pretty quickly that there's no single owner within the organization, but rather customer experience must be everyone's responsibility. It's part of everyone's job. But we also need to be honest for a second and recognize the fact that while customer experience might be part of everyone's job, it's ultimately going to be the responsibility of IT to implement the solutions that are going to deliver a superior customer experience. And the technology leaders who are doing this well really have adopted that outside-in mindset where they're thinking less about their internal processes and their stakeholders and are more focused or just as focused on their customers and how those customers actually engage with their business. It's these types of customer-focused insights that are going to help IT shift away from being viewed as a cost center and towards being seen more as a center for value creation inside the organization. By rallying stakeholders from across the enterprise, just as really IT always has done, and refocusing attention on the customer experience, technology organizations can can move away from being seen just as order takers and and start becoming the trusted advisors, the, the catalyst for innovation, the thought leaders that we really need them to be in order to deliver business aligned solutions that are going to provide a superior customer experience. This idea of IT taking on a more active role in customer experience is going to become even more critical as we shift towards a greater number of of technology-enabled business models in the growing digital economy. So it's going to become even more important for technology leaders to start to take a greater custody of the customer experience and form a very strong partnership with their business counterparts. Well, you know, speaking of IT, if we look specifically at IT, you know, IT really does have an opportunity to drive the customer experience. You know, in a lot of ways, they're going to provide the systems that actually, you know, showcase the benefits and improvements. You know, so if if we look at things and, and we try to understand how are customer insights being used by IT today and used in IT decisions, and has that changed the makeup of the IT organization at all, Nigel? Well, it's it's a great question, and and without doubt, the IT organization is changing significantly, and we're seeing new skills come into IT and around customer experience and everything else that's associated with that. And it really comes down to understanding the the way we're delivering these new customer experiences, these new ways of creating value for customers, is sort of captured in this definition we have of, of digital transformation. These companies that are transforming, these digital innovators, they're using emerging tech to satisfy customer desires in new ways, creating new sources of value for the customer, and ultimately driving revenue. And when, we, when we've looked at the way these companies are operating, they're really conforming to four new rules of business that we've, we've developed. So let, let me just share with you real quickly what those, what those rules look like. The four rules are straightforward. They're all interconnected with the customer at the center. So you have these digital experiences, the ability to create world-class experiences that are easy, effective, emotional. They connect to the customer's outcome. Very important. But they have to be built on top of operations that focus on the things customers value. And very often in the past, you might have seen marketing trying to work on digital experiences and IT working on operations and sort of never the twain shall meet. That's completely changed now. Marketing and and the technology group are very much intertwined. And in the best companies, the CIO and CMO work in lockstep together, hand in glove. They are are very strong partners with delivering customer experience. And in the the more laggard companies, you still see this separation between marketing and IT and and, uh, sort of the distrust between the two. In the leading companies, none of that exists. There's a lot of trust, a lot of overlap, and a lot of shared resources among the teams. At the same time, these companies look at how do we tap into digital ecosystems, building platforms and partnerships to accelerate and scale. And then then they also try and make sure they develop this sort of innovation culture because they recognize a lot of the innovation that has to go on is actually at the intersection of experiences and operations. So these four things become these sort of essential guiding rules of how you think about accelerating the, the business. So at the center of all of this is the customer. And when you look at the customer journey that underpins all of this, you have to start analyzing the 
touch points, every single touch point across the journey, and trying to uncover the gaps that create these substandard experiences and outcomes. And behind all of those touch points are these back-end systems, very often that are managed and, and, and developed by people in the tech leadership team. And so you, have to, you really have to have this combination between marketing and IT to work well in, in delivering world-class customer experiences. Many of the marketing leaders that I talked to in, in looking at the relationship between CIOs and CMOs said that they, when they started out doing technology development, they might have started out in isolation, and they realized that they couldn't build the right kind of experience without involving the IT team. And so they started to build a much stronger, more cohesive sort of relationship with the technology team to the extent that these leaders now have these very blended teams that you can't, you can't separate the two. So it's very important to, to use things like journey mapping as an IT skill set and be partnered with the marketing team, the customer experience teams, to be able to do, build out these world-class experiences. And when we look at where companies are investing in the sort of transformation journey that, that we see happening today, we can see that a lot, of the, a lot of the investment happens around customer experience, customer service, and marketing. It's pretty much everything in red on this slide. And there's a lot of IT processes that, that are involved as well because those underlying systems are so key to delivering great customer experiences. But the other thing that this slide shows is that there's investment across the board, right? So a lot of the transformation, that, the real transformation opportunities, that innovation they talked about in the four rules of business, happen at that intersection of operations and customer experience. And a lot of that is actually still the uncovered, untouched opportunity that's there. Many of the things that are in the blue shade here, that's kind of the, the next opportunity that many, many organizations have to go at to create these next level customer experiences that are going to create value for customers in the future. Well, Matt, you know, clearly a lot of organizations don't have all the expertise they need and they need some help. You know, how does NTT data enable organizations, particularly the IT leaders, to help drive and improve that customer experience that, you know, Nigel correctly points out is so important these days? So, Aaron, when it comes to customer experience, we're working with our clients to quantify, understand, and eliminate what we're calling customer friction across the customer journey in order to create those world-class experiences. At NTT Data, we define customer friction really as any aspect of the customer interaction that's going to have a negative impact on the customer's experience. So the premise here is that the less friction a customer encounters when they're doing business with an organization, the more likely they're going to be to be satisfied with the transaction, the product, the service, ultimately the company, and really continue to do business with that organization going forward. So to better understand this concept, we break customer friction down into five categories, engagement, process, technology, ecosystem, and knowledge. So let me give you a, a quick example of engagement friction. As many of us probably have before, I recently had to go and renew an insurance policy. And when I wanted to do that, my, my first step was to go online, log into the portal, and then hopefully renew from there. But I quickly found out after a call into a contact center that that wasn't going to be the case. And a very nice call center representative informed me that she was going to have to email me a PDF, which I would then have to print out, fill out by hand, and fax back to them. So, Aaron, Nigel, I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't have a fax machine in my office. And so what this company did is they created significant barriers or, or customer friction uh, for me as a customer in accomplishing my goal, which was essentially to continue to do business with the organization. And this is just one example of many things that we look at when we examine this idea of, of customer friction. So with this in mind, at NTT Data, We've developed what we call the customer friction factor, and it's a quantitative method for evaluating friction within that customer experience so that we can use that information to drive the customer-focused transformation that we're talking about today. With the customer friction factor, we actually analyze a transaction for friction and assign it a numeric score that's going to indicate the level of, of friction a customer experienced along the way when they're accomplishing their goal and provide some of the details of the transactions and the insights that we garner along the way. Ultimately, the goal of CFF is to understand friction, begin to gain insights into where and why that, that friction exists, and then ultimately use this information to improve the overall experience for the customer. And this is just one of the ways that we can help drive customer-focused transformation into the organizations that we partner with. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting, and I agree with you on the insurance industry's dedication to facts. It's just, it is a high friction point. But let's talk about fixing things. You know, clearly, you know, one of the things I think that's so valuable in this event today is 
we're going to talk about what IT leaders can do now and over the next six months to really improve that customer experience. And, and Nigel, I know you have some thoughts on this, and, and you're going to get to some specifics on things that IT leaders can do now to raise their profile, get more engaged, improve the customer experience that actually don't involve huge budgets and huge expenditures, better ways to inject the customer experience into decision-making. Can you take us through that a little bit? Sure. Well, you know, what's really interesting is that the, the research highlights a lot of things that, that IT leaders can do to, to help change the way they operate without spending huge amounts of money. It's really more these sort of tactical things that can be done. And I, I use this acronym just to, to help remember what, what it is these things are, demos, and I'll just walk you through quickly what, it, what each of these are and, and, and talk about them. So the first D is, is for design, right? So, so think about how you can build design skills into the technology team, into the IT team. Design skills have to be part of the, the way we go about business. And many organizations are sort of looking at things like design thinking, which has been around for years, but really looking at it as a more formal discipline to put into the development process. And that goes alongside learning the language of the customer experience professional. They have their own language just like IT guys have. And so we need to learn to talk the language of the customer experience professional, talk about customer journeys, understand journey mapping, touch point analysis, and put design thinking into that process. And co-develop, co-design, co-develop with customers. So this is something that, that many technology teams have never done, but bringing customers in to co-design, co-develop becomes a very important part of the process. It doesn't cost a lot of money to be able to do that. And another point is to, when you're evaluating how to invest, which projects or products to invest in, look at prioritizing customer experience over cost reduction. That really does start to shift how you look at what to invest in. And then make sure that as you're looking at every change that you put through the technology team, that every change is looked at from the perspective of the customer. What does this do for the customer experience? Is it making a, an improved experience or a, or a less valuable experience for the customer? So that's the design element. The second element is around empowering, empowering the teams that are working on these projects with, around the customer to actually own the outcome. That IT isn't just there to do the coding, that they're, they're a true partner in helping to reflect what will improve the experience. One company I talked with talked about their their technology team, their developers working on a customer experience project, and the, the team was empowered enough that the developers were able to say, yeah, we could design it that way, but if we do, the experience won't be as good as if we do this because that's going to improve the performance of the application, and that will mean a better experience for the customer. And so they were able to bring their expertise on how to design a scalable application that would work at, a, at the performance they needed to improve the experience at the end of the day. And so both the designers and the developers have expertise they can bring to the party. And very important to make sure everybody's empowered to, to own the outcome. Embedding customer experience into the marketing teams is another key area that we see companies doing, sort of making these combined teams. Also, getting people in IT just in front of real customers is a hugely valuable thing to do. We, we learn so much by, by touching customers, by hearing customers, by listening to what's going on in their lives and experiencing what they're doing. The M stands for measuring. So how we measure is very important. Not only measuring sort of transactions, which is, which is key, because a lot of the leaders now are monitoring transactions in real time and being able to, to sort of identify potential problems before they become you know, scalable or scaled problems and tackle those very early on. Monitoring the right metrics that are proxies for an experience. So understanding what we can monitor as a trigger that will show us that something is going to deteriorate at the customer's touch point that, that will help us prevent that happening in the future or even right now. And make sure we let the customers be the guide as to what to measure because they'll tell us what is good and what is not. So we've got to be listening to customers. We've got to have opportunities for capturing feedback from customers at every touch point. So measure becomes very critical. The O is for organize. So think about how you Organize your IT, your IT team and make sure it's a customer experience-oriented team. We bring together all the customer-facing systems and teams, so they're all working together along with the marketing team if they're involved in customer experience, which typically they are. Use customer journey mapping as a way of breaking down silos across the organization and making sure you're embedding teams into that customer experience design process. And then the S, the last S is for speed, which is really about thinking about how you can accelerate creating value for customers, accelerate developing these, 
these new customer experiences. So we see things like Agile and DevOps becoming table stakes. Obviously, we're looking at a much more API-enabled technology landscape now and looking at how we can design a technology architecture that's designed to constantly change, to constantly evolve, to keep that equation I talked about in, earlier on in balance. That means technology has to be constantly evolving. So we have to think about speed as a critical element of value delivery for the customer. So if you use demos as an acronym, it'll give you that guide to what can be done today without investing a whole heck of a lot to improve the outcome that the technology team brings to the organization around developing great customer experiences. So in all of this, measuring the customer experience is a key element, being able to understand what we're doing today and how we can improve it. And Matt, I know you've got some things you want to share with us on around how to do that. Yes, Nigel. As you know, I love the idea of measuring the customer experience. We've found that most organizations measure the quantity of customer engagement, whether it's page views or calls into a contact center, but very few people are measuring the quality of customer experience today. So at NTT Data, we've been running customer friction factor assessments across various industries, and what I'm showing you here is actually a snapshot of the analysis that we did of some of the top consumer packaged goods companies. So our consultants looked at the customer experience of searching for a product, gathering product information, and determining where they could make a purchase of that product. The heat map here, it's going to show you how far ahead or behind a brand is from the average experience within that industry by highlighting a total CFF score and the score across the five categories of customer friction that we spoke to earlier, engagement, process, technology, ecosystem, and knowledge. You can view the heat map by starting at green, which is best in class or 50% better than average CFF score, and then move to white, which indicates more of an organization that's in that average spot, and then to red portion, right, which is a, a scale that indicates where the brand could be challenged. What this shows us is really where there are opportunities to implement the changes that are necessary to reduce customer friction and improve the overall customer experience. It allows us to really pinpoint where those opportunities for change are. So here's the benefit of this type of analysis. We may all understand the intrinsic value that our organizations receive by focusing on the customer experience and ultimately the impact that a great customer experience can have on, on loyalty or customer retention, even expansion of our business. However, we've traditionally been challenged, I think, to connect how improving the customer experience is actually going to move the needle of business measures. So at NTT Data, we've been working to establish really a set of industry benchmarks which connect customer experience back to the improvements in those business measures that ultimately the C-suite is going to be concerned about. Using our CFF analysis and the consumer packaged goods industry as an example here, you know, we can see that the brands with the best CFF assessment scores, they were just simply better able to translate their CX investment into improvements in business measures like asset turnover, profitability, things that truly matter inside of that industry. If we look at the retail industry as another example, we can see similar benefits of investing in customer experience, where the organizations with a superior customer experience, they actually grew at a rate that was four times greater than their competitors over a three-year period when we compare their Kagers side by side. The takeaway here is simple, right? It's that customer experience really impacts business results and that taking an active role in the ownership and the delivery of a superior customer experience will better align technology leaders to the business priorities and the outcomes that are truly top of mind for their executives. That was awesome. Thanks so much. Unfortunately, though, it looks like we've come to the end of our allotted time for this webcast. I'd truly like to thank our speakers, Nigel and Matt. That was just a great job today. Awesome information. Just great direction. And I'd like to thank those of you in our audience for joining us today. We know you have a busy day. We appreciate the fact that you make us part of it. For IDG, this is Aaron Goldberg signing off.